Alrighty, welcome back everybody. For those of you who missed it, this is the UConn vs. RIT Round of 8 match in the Dota Tournament for CSL. The winner of this game will actually make, or the winner of this match, I should say, should make it to the Round of 4 playoffs, which are a LAN Finals in Toronto, so a lot of stakes on the line here. Uh, UConn won Game 1 with a pretty long win, but they had a very, uh, pretty, pretty nice comeback despite a small throw they had at the some point of the game. Regardless, I am Zingle. Joining me still is Hachiko. Uh, game two underway. What do we expect? Anything Anything different, you think, strategy-wise? or? Uh... Um, the thing about RIT is they, uh, at some point, I thought they had that game, for sure. And it was just that it came down to that one last push and just some slightly better execution from that last team fight might have been the difference between whether they were... Uh, coming in with a one-game advantage or one-game disadvantage in this game. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say if they played a, the early game a bit better there, they definitely would have had so much trouble with UConn in general. And that might have just been down to the rust from not playing in CSL for, what would you say, like t two months now? So, uh, one of their players, or not one of their players, but somebody associated with RIT, I believe it's their sixth player, or their captain or manager or something, but they responded in chat saying it was actually three and a half months since they've last played a CSL match. So it's been quite a while, and that's, what, three and a half months ago, that was when 7.0 was still a fresh and new thing. Yeah. And it definitely mm -hmm. put some rust on your team. Uh, especially if you were on the top of your form a while ago when you were playing those um, season matches. But uh, when you enter the playoffs, unless you're keeping with regular scrimming, even ha a week off can affect you. And it definitely showed there where they didn't have the cleanest early game, but they showed composure, as I said, throughout the game and were able to almost bring it back. So yeah. um depends how well the players can adapt uh, after game one. As far much. as strategy-wise, like changing it up, from a completely unbiased caster perspective, I would like to see a fast-paced early game uh, push strat. <laughs> because another 68-minute uh, resident sleeper game could get a little bit tough, especially if this goes into a game three. Miami might be here all night. But, I mean, with the pick so far... RIT is going There's for already a, a Coddle, you know. Coddle That's... and Legion. Both of these heroes push out waves extremely well. And they both deal with, like, mass unit or illusion strategies. Like, if, you know, a Terror Blade or an AM pops up, these heroes do very well at dealing with that. Well, they did ban out the Tinker and Abaddon on the side of Yukon. They don't want to deal with those annoying heroes once mm -hmm. again. So, I don't know, it should be interesting to see where RIT goes with this. I imagine it's going to be an offlane legion. It might even be a dual offlane legion and keeper. That's a pretty silly strategy where you just mass mana the legion and or you just spam uh, nukes from the side wave. And if a carry is sitting there and you get hit by both legion's nuke and a uh, illuminate wave at the same time, you know, that's half your health pool gone. You can't really farm until you heal up. And because you don't have the shrine really readily available, it's a very tough spot to be in. So if they go choose to go 2 one 2 with that, I would be okay with it. But if Legion ends up solo offlaning, you know, it's not too bad either. Uh, it's a very strong aggro dual lane. Mm -hmm. um, both the heroes have a way to push out the wave. can force your carry to just um, hit creeps under a tower. And it allows you to pretty much do anything you want in the lane. Bully the supports, pull the big camp to the side. And, of course, having the Shrine available for them to uh, help sustain as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have the right lane to deal with it, you can just get uh, uh, your safe lane completely destroyed. So, I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't see a Triumph Protector, because it was banned up in the first phase in the first game, but this game, it seems, it kind of got forgotten about. It's one of the new heroes in this uh, 7.05 patch for Captain's Mode. I would like to see it picked up. Uh, instead, Yukon goes for the Wyvern, which is kind of a direct counter to Legion, as long as you don't duel the Wyvern, whoever that you do duel could just get cold embraced and no damage dealt from you at least. Uh, so it's kind of a counter, it's pretty nice. A Treant can do the same thing, but globally, you know, if you just living armor with uh, max living armor anyone across the map, it's going to be a tough duel to get unless you're that far ahead already. Um, and as we look at Yukon's bans too, they're banning Naga, they're banning Tinker. These heroes both D-push and like split-push and cut waves really well. 
and they both uh, stall out the game really well. So we might see like a push strategy from Yukon or a very aggressive early core lineup where they just want to group up and hit towers or gr uh, split push and hit towers. And both Naga and Tinker do well against it. So could be something along those lines for Yukon. Meanwhile, RIT banned both TA and Lifestealer. Um, I don't think that really spells any certain draft. It's more of just, we don't want to see a TA Slardar combo because of minus armor. We don't want to see a Lifestealer Slardar combo because that's a classic of infest, jump out, stun somebody, and then having Lifestealer smack into somebody that has 10 to 20 armor missing. They're just food. So I don't think uh, RIT's bans really tell as much as Yukon's do, but we'll see with yeah, this uh, next phase coming up. Yukon quite confident with this strategy they have with the Slara going on right now. And they don't have their Spirit Breaker, which does get banned out by RT, but with this Slaughter first pick, it's probably going to be played by Bellicoso once again. Mm -hmm. He played it well last game. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do it this game. That Normally would mean it's an offlane, though, right? Yeah. yeah. So but... it is a little bit unorthodox. They, they could yeah. change it up and run a 4 position, and Bellicoso could just be a 4 position player all of a sudden, like he's a Slardar specialist. Um, but considering Bellicoso played it so well last game, and they pick it up immediately this game, if RIT is you know on top of things, they might notice that as well and realize that could just be an offlane Slardar again, or most likely it will be. And if UConn is even one step ahead of that, they could predict that RIT sees that and say, yeah, we're going to pick Slardar, make you guys think it's an offlaner, and then throw you for a loop and just put in the four roll. <laughs> so there's a lot of ways UConn could still go with this. So I'm, I'm a fan of how the draft is looking right now for both squads. So they probably need their... They don't want to pick their carry yet, because as I said, they don't really know of that Slaughter. I mean, I guess, they can, I guess they can assume and they pick a carry here. It wouldn't be bad, because they don't know what UConn is running right now with just the Wyvern and Slaughter, so they might want to save their second support to have something to do better against the cores on the side of UConn, but yeah, or they're going to just pick it up here as well with uh, Roma Earth Spirit. So Very with... active, very aggressive. It'll mean that that's not a dual offlane for Keeper Legion, but I don't think that really hurts RIT as much as, uh, you know. I, I like these supports if the Earth Spirit knows what he's doing. If the Earth Spirit doesn't really uh, have that aggression or have the early impact that he needs, these two supports might fall off from behind. Neither of them is very useful without uh, levels and or items. Lion. A lion pickup from Yukon. This is not a uh, very common support picked up right now, but this is a new patch. I don't think a line got changed at all, but since he hasn't been changed, that might mean that he could be pretty strong support, especially in this game, uh, setting up solo pickoffs. It seems like something that UConn definitely favor with the slaughter pickup there as well. They like to just be able to get those kills at any point. Um, two heroes might be missing off the map, but those two heroes might be killing your mid or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Well. It's it's really curious to see how this game is going to go, because the two supports did just get picked up from Yukon. So Slardar will be in the offlane, and if uh, RIT picks a one uh, off or a safe laner that can 1v1 the Slardar, and they just camp this Keeper offlane and Earth Spirit mid, they could run some weird, like, you know, 1v1. They could even put Legion 1v1 against the Slardar, and have Keeper be very aggressive, have Earth Spirit be very aggressive, and just by default they're going to be, you know, doing their jobs, because these heroes can be very like, big nuisances in lane. So the Shadow Fiend we didn't get to see last game, because they picked OD up instead, we're going to see it now. Um, it's pretty much immediately picked up after they saw the Invoker picked up for RIT. And how does that matchup go? Shadow Fiend versus Invoker. I think Shadow Fiend does okay. I don't think either of them really excel against the other, and both of them just want to farm anyway. So I've, in, I've seen Invoker do very well against Shadow Fiend, but... He has less strength now. I don't, <laughs> does that matter? But think, the, the, the most recent patch they nerfed his strength. I think by like two or something. Invoker. Oh yeah, the base strength by two. Yeah, that doesn't yeah, really matter. Strength. Yeah, it might cause you to die one or two times. You know, all those escapes that we see. You know, ten, twenty, thirty health. It might be like a fluke death here or there, but it's not really that significant. 
Um, yeah, How going does Invoker drunk. deal with the new uh, Midas change, actually? He has more gold, but less experience. Yeah, you're, not, Invoker you're, you're still going to pick the... it. Yeah, you're still going to get the item, because it's so important on Invoker to get those levels, extra levels where you can, that it's uh, always going to be a right choice. It's just going to be a little less effective at what it does. It might get you to your ags a little quicker, but keep you from, you know, level 17. Because... It's not even that big of a change. Think about it. If you use Midas, let's say, 10 times by the minute 25, 30, let's say you've used it 10 times on the biggest creep that you can, that's only like 500 XP difference at minute 30. And that's not even a full level. Like, you could still be level 18 or level 18, regardless of the change. It might be enough to be like half a level difference, and that might just like, jump you over the edge. But... At the end of the day, like, Invoker Midas is still Invoker Midas. You're still getting your farm catching up and keeping ahead with it. You're still getting extra XP, and it's uh, still, I think, the correct item choice. Alright, and these, Warlord. these last picks, I like the pick from RIT. Troll Warlord gives them really good push. With Legion, uh, press the attack, Invoker Alacrity, Troll Warlord uh, Ultimate, these heroes have insanely good right-click potential, and if they're in the right spot at the right time, or if they're ratting at the right time, or when their defense isn't quite ready, these towers will crumble. And furthermore, just against Yukon, yes, it kind of hurts because you have a Wyvern. If Wyvern ults, somebody could just die in the blink of an eye, but... You do well against Shadow Fiend and Juggernaut with Troll. You do well against those heroes with a Legion if you get a good duel off. And Invoker just, you know, does Invoker things. And with a Keeper in this game as well. Uh, that global recall ability, um, the ratting is definitely going to be a real thing for RIT if they play it right. Mm -hmm. So for the draft, I might actually give the advantage to RIT so far. But uh, let's do some intros right now. RIT, they have both two supports teleporting out. Ritz on the support keeper this time, teleporting into the bottom lane. Mato, Mato on the uh, Earth Spirit's other support, TPing into the off lane. We got Sext X3 Eradicate. I don't know what you want to call him, but he has like three different names that are showing up for this guy on the off lane Legion. We got Evaden on the Invoker, and. Uh... Oh, wait, no, different guy. So Sext is the. Troll Warlord, Eradicate is the Legion. My bad, little mix up there. Go ahead and introduce the uh, Dire Squad, Yukon. Alright, on Yukon, we got Village Fish on the support, Winter Wyvern, Old G playing the Lion Melody on the mid Shadow Fiend, Bellicosa once again on his Slaughter, and Ego this time around with Juggernaut. And you got the Karna, Arcana up with uh, the red skin. Yeah, so these wards coming out from the side of RIT are very good. The Observer is pretty deep, doesn't block the camp, and they use the uh, Sentry pretty deep, hidden in the trees to block that big pull camp. So Legion should have a pretty nice lane up here if the pulls aren't uh, that successful. And in the safe lane, a Troll Warlord against a Slardar. Slardar already understands this lane isn't going to go that well for him, so he starts with an Iron Talon, and he's ready to just fall back at a moment's notice. Uh, they're just going to go with a standard tri lane to start off with for RIT. Mm -hmm. So where's the lane to watch then? Is that going to be mid lane this game with the gankers on uh, the side of RIT and the fact that their safe lane should just win against the Slardar and their off lane should just be able to hold off? Mm, should be, but it might be a side lane because it looks like uh, Matau actually wanting to start bottom. Maybe get a kill there into Bellicoso. And he is semi-prepared for this as he picked up Iron Talon in this game. I think he did that last game as well, but he didn't really need to jungle last game much because mm -hmm. it was just a uh, dual lane. Now a really good block coming out of the side of RIT and now that'll put Bellicoso in a very bad spot. He's going to get rolled on. He's going to get mana leaked at level 1, which is pretty unique, and now they have no way to stop his TP. They don't have bash, or they don't even have the melee form leveled on Troll, so no escape, uh, no cancel for the TP, and that's going to be a free escape for Slardar. Unfortunately, he TP'd all the way back to base. He uh, may have panicked a little or just been a little unprepared. So he is going to have to make the walk of shame back to the jungle and just waste a bunch of time. Mm, that's not too common from Kato at all to level up mana leaf like that, especially mm -hmm. after the changes. It costs so much mana now, and his mana barely got burned there. It definitely is affected pretty significantly. Uh, yeah, maybe if you have like an Ursa or if you're against a Timber Saw, that uh, skill is really nice. But if you don't have the damage output, if you don't have the stun potential, it's really tough to make that work. 
And I mean, it's just a heads up play by Bellicoso to run to the side shop, not panic by TP and TP out, because he didn't start with that TP. And they could yeah, have seen that. stop him from jungling down here, so he's just going to go straight into his own jungle. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, offlane Eradicate is getting to this XP. He's level 2.5 already, and as you see, this support just cannot trade hits with him. Every time uh, Eradicate walks forward, Wyvern has to run away. So with Coddle being down here, they, they force the slaughter out of jungle, but they could also be dominating this jug right now if he just started top. Maybe Slaughter is going to get more, but I feel like um, Troll 1v1 against Slaughter has a pretty okay lane, especially if the Earth Spirit shows up here and there to go for a gank. Mm -hmm. If you start out 1v1, it's not that great, but if you get a you know free level or two, get some free farm, and then it's a 1v1, it's even better. Mid lane, we almost saw First Blood Melody uh, style in on evading. Misses that third raise, though, or that long range raise and evading just gets away and heals up, but if Melody with the the very lucky double damage rune, and that'll just make this lane uh, a breeze for him for the next minute or so. Or 30 seconds or so. Top lane, so, I missed uh, it, but... Yeah, Eradicate's gonna go down in the top lane. And just gets a stun spin. On. Yep, by the line. He had the boots to set it up. They started with the Arctic Burn, and he didn't go for the double stun either. He went for manager and he was still level one so it didn't matter but despite but... that death i don't even think it's that bad for eradicate because he has the creep wave under his tower now and compare him to the slardar who has almost literally nothing eradicate's going to be level three in a moment and he's going to get this double creep wave under his tower so dying in the offlane not even the end of the world or er, feeding first blood it's a little unfortunate but it went the way of uh lion not juggernaut so i'm sure he would uh, be content with that trade now they can pull it back at this point here, and they're going to be able to connect pretty well here. Oh, uh, Eradicate tries to cancel it and just barely misses one creep, so it won't fully uh, cancel that pull. Looks like the Earth Spirit will be roaming mid. Doesn't get the kickback onto Melody, but I think it's still going to be enough. Yep, the yep. last right click coming out of the Earth Spirit. Nice, nice kill there. Yes, the kickback missed, but it was enough to force Stratofiend to have to reroute his escape. I guess that's not the worst kickback. It didn't get him under the tower, but it got him to a yeah, a weird angle. You can see my drawings, nice. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> so it's free farm troll versus free farm juggernaut, pretty much. Um, who's this gonna favor? Uh, the Troll Warlord, I believe. There's just a point in this game where Troll just runs at the Juggernaut and there's nothing Jug can do. It's not like you can man up and spin on him because Troll just, just hits back and gets a, you know, a million attack speed and kills you. And if you Juggernaut ult the Troll, he's just so tanky and so, uh, has nice supports here. Gank onto Evidin. Oh, nice three-man stun from Matau, but it it's won't not be gonna enough. be enough. Yeah. The r r rotation is there from Ritz, but once again, you're just gonna mana leak him and do what? Shadowfiend can just man up on you and maybe even get a return kill if he gets a good raise. And with the shrine being up, spam pink by Ego. He's like, guys, stop farming. I want to heal up. Hurry up. I need to get back to hitting creeps. And now this troll warlord is just going to be farming up. He's The CS is very even. 31 to 30 for the safe laners. 25 and, 20, 25 and 5 against 25 and 5 for the mid lane. Yes, there is a kill going one way, but there's also a kill going the other. I believe it's 1 to 1 for these two. Oh no, it's not. Both of them are 0-1-1, one, and one, so neither of them got the kill for those mid-ganks. Uh, the only difference here is Eradicate's getting a lot more out of the um, offlane, mm -hmm. but with the kills, OG is pretty farmed on this line compared to Kato. He has his Tranquils up already. He's gonna go for another gank here onto Evident. And now, you know, Evaden's level 5 right now. Compare that to Slardar, who just barely level 4. Once uh, Legion gets 6, he could be very active and turn this game in their favor. It's kind of the role that uh, Bellicoso did last game with the roaming Slardar. He had a very nice uh, lane, very active lane, and then he just got super aggressive in minutes like 10 to 20, and 15, or, you know, 5 to 20, and made the, you know, huge snowball lead possible. So, Evident was forced back to base. Is so that uh, a gank? Bellic who? Evident. Oh, right, uh, sorry. Right. And Walker. 
I'm looking at the wrong names. So, he's gonna have a pretty late Midas, probably like 10-11 minutes, unless he gets a Sunstrike kill. Yeah. In that case, everything changes. They do have the duel set up, which is gonna be nice. It's gonna not only help the duel damage, but help him stay in the game with this uh, bonus gold. Eradicate almost goes down in this top lane, but he actually tanks a pretty big Coddle Blaster. And with... Ooh, Sunstrike! Oh, oh it hits! Just barely on the mark. Alright. This is uh, on his way to Midas now. I don't want to hear this invoker. Uh, just, you know, just sit mid, have a bad lane, then hit a Sunstrike, and suddenly you have a very fast Midas. Yep. And then you just go jungle and split push for 20 minutes, get your eggs, and then all of a sudden you show up to a fight and you just stomp everybody. The classic reason Invoker is such an annoying hero. And, and now look at the CS. Is still very far behind. Uh, remember, remember when I was saying the CS was even at 31 and 31 for the carries? Well, since then, this uh, Troll Warlord has gotten 19 CS, 20 CS, and Jug has died and only gotten th like 5 CS. So all of a sudden, this game is looking even better for RIT. Yeah, a lot better early game in this game than they had in the last one. Uh, the Legion dying for first blood there. Um, in, in theory, that gave a lot of gold away to the line, but it didn't look like it mattered because you still got a lot out of this thing compared to the Slaughter. Now Wyvern and, in a very tough spot. He does manage to fly over the tree line, and he's just going to deny himself up to Roche. He doesn't want to risk Eradicate coming in and getting a free duel. So, he'll be spawning back in 20 seconds, taking a nice, uh, break from the game. Yeah, oh, Invoker has his Midas. Does he really? Wow, so that yeah. went from a possible 11, 12 minute Midas to a very typical 8 minute Midas timing. Yeah, this is a casual 300 gold. From that kill on the Juggernaut. Definitely helping him out there. So I think the players to watch in this game that are really going to turn the tide for uh, RIT, or at least lead the snowball, are going to be this uh, Invoker and Legion Commander. If Legion manages to set up a few duels, gets him snowball, and get, makes him a threat at all times to the Juggernaut, to this uh, Shadow Fiend, it could be a really big deal. And with this uh, gank bottom, they're going to dive the tower and get a kill onto the Slardar, so that could be a tier 1 going down as well. The Siege Creep was saved, but he just denies it rather than using it to push. A little bit uh, questionable there, but at the end of the day, the tower should still be uh, susceptible to dying. Eradicate gonna go down in the top lane yeah. there to again coming out from OG once again. It seems like I've missed every kill onto Eradicate, but I assume same thing, just stun and spin down. Yep. Omni Slash wasn't even used, so now if uh, Eradicate comes back to the lane again, it could just be an instant turnaround kill and. That's not what we want to see from this hero. Just saying that he's the one that really has got to set up the pace of the game. And if he's uh, feeding kills, it's not... not His not farm's best. actually not looking the best here. Um, he has a lot of levels, but in terms of farm on himself, he doesn't even have his face boost yet. And he's not that far ahead of the slaughter. He's only 200 gold ahead of the slaughter after that death. Yeah, well that's the point of the Iron Tail and jungle, even if you're not really uh, a good jungler, you can just stay stay on par at least with the... Uh... I feel like they can get so much more if the Kato was just up here since uh, very early. Or the Earth Spirit. Because imagine either Kato or Earth Spirit there for that first gank they did onto Eradicate. Well, you didn't see it, but uh, they might have got a turnaround and kill, um, maybe getting the first blood themselves there. Mm -hmm. Because this troll doesn't need help anymore, for sure. Slaughter shows up, and he's not going to be able to contest the lane against this troll at this point. So I don't think so. He wants uh, the max points in Whirling Axes. This is quite different from what we've yeah. seen from trolls. Well, I, I see this build around too, because it just allows you to fight and uh, deal a bunch of nuke damage, and it also lets you farm the jungle fairly well. He has the Coddle for extra mana, he has the Aquila to kind of sustain that mana. So if he just uses Whirling Axes on every creep camp, he can take it out pretty quick. It'll help him split push, because he can kill creep waves really quick. It's uh, it's not an awful build, it's just not the uh, most common one. And, you know, they're yeah, going to be... This tower push a lot slower, for yeah. sure. Having the extra points in Fervor here, he'll get, you know, a bonus 
180 attack speed as opposed to 90. Or 210 as opposed to uh, 105. So that's a pretty we'll big deal. It it's a free moon shard. Now Matau is with Eradicate. I guess he's not even needed there as the duel is just going to come in and they're going to be able to finish off Jug. Yeah, the not Sunstrike duel. Wherever and however. Yeah, Sunstrike duel at the end of the day. They're probably going to get a free tier 1 as well, having Juggernaut die and uh, Troll rotate up already. Yeah, and Evaden just gets a gets solo, a kill, solo kill. How did that happen? This cold snap, Alacrity oh. right click down? <laughs> I'm underestimating the damage coming out from Evident at this point with the um, almost maxed out Exort. And it's got punished for it. There's a lot of damage coming out with the Alacrity. And it's yeah. Finger being used here on the Earth Spirit top. It does not manage to get a kill. Juggernaut's looking to get a little bit more, but tanks a uh, stone to the face. And now they actually have to be a little careful chasing too far. The wave just barely misses, and that could have been enough to kill Ego, but Ego's still getting very low. The right. Sunstrike a little bit off the mark. The duel is up and available, so if he managed to duel somebody, they might go down. And now uh, Troll is a little bit deep, but those Whirling Axes will get the kill on him after he falls out. So it will be a one-for-one. One. Carries both going down. Now Eradicate has to run away. Four heroes on the chase, and it looks like he will get away scot-free. It was a pretty interesting death there from the Jug. He Omni bounced to two creeps and then immediately died to the spin that was still going on. Right. Meanwhile, Invoker did take that tower. He missed the Sunstrike, so he didn't really get the kill. If he hit that Sunstrike, killed Juggernaut, saved his Drill Warlord, that could have been a great fight for them. But instead, it's only okay, one for one. They do get the tower, and... Like I was saying, Evaden just farming up his eggs. He went from a very, very slow, potentially like 11 minute Midas, to now being at 13 minutes with two components available to purchase on his uh, eggs. He is only right. 1800 off of a full eggs, and it's 13 minutes in. So if you look at the net worth, he's just flying ahead of the competition. And I think RIT is definitely in a spot to just take over and snowball this game. Eradicate with his uh, medallion build up here. Not too common from Legion Commander off lanes, but you can see the value in the item in this game, especially against the Slaughter. Looks like there will be an attempted fight right here. They know Juggernaut doesn't have Omni Slash, so they might be looking for a little more. The Cold Embrace does come out. Or, sorry, Winter's Curse does come out, but that's going to be a dead uh, Winter Wyvern. And now there's Duel will come out. That's going to be a dead Lion. And now Bellicoso in a little bit too deep, trying to help his friend, but he's just oh, going to get mad at Legion. is actually useful, whoa! And a triple kill now for the Legion. So it seems like every time I say somebody's going to have trouble doing their job because one bad thing happens, it just turns right back around and they prove me wrong. This uh, Invoker doing exactly what he needs to do after a pretty tough start, and now this uh, Legion, after dying twice, is 3-2-3, three, and three, gets a triple kill, another duel, and now they're in a good position to keep pushing, keep this pressure up on the map. And Coddle is pretty decently farmed as well after that engagement. He can either go towards Zags Probably or maybe yeah. something like a four staff to help his team out or Glimmer. He's queued up the egg, so he will be going for that. He'll probably get around 20, 25. And if his team continues pushing towers, it could be a lot earlier than that. So this game going well. And something else to note, both of the supports on the side of Yukon have pretty long ultimates. And aside from that, you know, they're only somewhat relevant in fights. And with this side, uh, with this team from RIT, they can push very aggressively. And, and it looks like they will get Aegis. Going. The contest is here, but it does not look like it will be in time. They will kill Eradicate at the start, and they will blow up the Drill Warlord with the Shadow Fiend ultimate. So it is going pretty nicely for Yukon here, and if they manage to secure one or two more kills off of this, they will be very content with how it's going. Looks like the Earth Shaker, Earth Spirit will be able to roll away, though. Arctic Blast will come out, and Sex will be so low. One more right click from Lion will get him out, and the recall won't be in time. So they will lose the Aegis and Troll Warlord and Legion Commander. Yes, the ultimates had to be used from the side of Yukon, but that is definitely worth it. Yeah, that's the classic claim Roshan and then walk out, meet the enemy team, immediately lose Aegis, yeah. and then die again. That's the punishing thing about this 16-minute, uh, 15-minute Rosh is you get hurt from it. It's not like you can just take it without any uh, loss. And now uh, more kills coming out of the side of Yukon. They're just looking for kill after kill. That's an uh, eradicate, I believe, uh, second death in a row. So this player seems, you know, have his highs in those. Dies twice, gets, you know, six kills without dying or six kills and assists and then dies twice again back to back. 
That's a lot of gold going to the way of um, Yukon. Mm -hmm. Old still... G gonna have his blink soon. Blink's already up onto Bellicosa, and we saw how much work he was able to do with that in the last game. Yep. Still largely in favor of RIT. This graph is actually very similar to what happened last game. The Yukon being, or er, yeah, Yukon being 7,500 ahead and then throwing it away a little to about 5,000. These graphs are almost, you know, the exact thing. But the difference is how the scaling works. I believe uh, RIT actually scales better this game. And they have this mid game also that's better. Just, you know, one or two unfortunate flights setting them back. But I still think they're in the driver's seat for how things should go. Yeah, especially if this Earth Spirit starts to scale, he's such a strong late game hero, having the Ags available to him. Yep, auto save pretty, anybody. Uh, ridiculous ability. Blink in, stone somebody on your team, kick them back like 2,000 units out of harm's way. It looks like there will be a smoke gank attempt out of Yukon coming up in this top lane, but baiting Gigo won't be good enough bait, won't be tasty enough. A troll will just go jungle. Once again, this invoker is just content farming. He's 700 gold away from his eggs. He'll have it before 20 minutes for sure. And uh, Ritz in this bottom lane, he knows something up because nobody's showing. He wants to farm. He's getting close to his eggs too, but they're, they're just playing safely and correctly on RAT, not throwing away this lead that they have right now. Yeah, they know the Slaughter is going to have his blink soon, so um, they're just playing it under their towers, not pushing out the waves too far and farming where they know they are safe. But now they see the push coming out from Yukon, and they're going to go back to defend it. Yeah, they do have really start. nice tower uh, tower defense on the side of oh. RAT. Yukon just going to get out of there. <laughs> as soon as they saw the Invoker show up, oh, I'm sure they saw him. But they knew that defense was coming, and they immediately backed away. Yep. Keeper and or Legion can both just defend towers from afar and then just run away and be safe. So it's uh, always going to be tough to push. Yes, they have the Juggernaut Healing Ward, which, you know, offsets that nuke damage. LOD lurking around here, maybe looking for some type of kill. He has an invis as well as a Shadow Blade, yeah. so... Blow somebody up and then Shadow Blade and run away. He might look like uh, he's going to kill Eradicate here. If he doesn't pop his invis, he does manage to save it. Now if he gets his ultimate here... That's going to be almost... Oh, he off the mark by a little bit, and it won't be enough to kill Eradicate there. If he had been two steps over, so he gets all the right side explosions as well, that would have been enough to get the kill. But, unfortunately, Legion just walked a little bit too far. So, Avadin going to have his Aghanims now. He's pretty strong in a fight. And, um, a troll with a lacquer on him is no joke. Mm-hmm. Once, once Troll starts hitting you, he has the max bash build as well, which I really like. He has the Legion and uh, Alacrity to kind of pump up his attack speed in the early game. So if he gets one of those bashes off, it's a two second bash, and then you're just going to have such high attack speed that they're going to stay bashed. So I'm a, I'm a pretty big uh, fan of how he's skilled this, this game. And he's going to be going for the Sanjin Yasha. He knows if he can just survive that initial burst from the other team, whether it be the Omni Slash or the ultimate from Shadow Fiend, he can easily turn it back around and heal up. Oh, this is Blink Dagger complete for the Legion now. Um, Lion also has his at this point. Has Slardar used his yet? Has Slardar made anything oh, he happen? Hasn't, he hasn't had a chance. And he hasn't been doing uh, anything else with it I'm either. I'm sure they've seen it by now on the side of RIT, yeah, so they're being a little cautious. back to farming, and they're just not giving him the opportunity. But this is just giving RIT time to farm up their core items. Yep. Keeper's going to get its Ags, and Legion has pretty much everything she needs now. We're going into the Blade Mail next. Um, Earth no. Spirit is hurting in farm a bit, but a couple of team fights goes RIT's way, and that completely changes. It looks like there is a smoke from RIT as well. They have the Blink Legion here. They do have smoke pop on uphill. They do not manage to blink. He doesn't... Or he hesitates a little bit. And there will be the Blink stun now. They will get the kill very quickly onto the Wyvern. And now it looks like Lion will also be one to drop. Bellicoso trying to do something. He does get a three-man stun at the start of that, but it is not enough. Oh! A very good deafening blast there, a very good silence. The Juggernaut does still manage to get off his ultimate because he has that newly picked up Manta, but he will go down as well. So at the end of the day, that's a 5 for 1 and a dual win. RIT coming out way ahead, and they have a tower just conveniently placed in front of them with creep waves already there. So there will be a tower as well here. And there's an Alacrity ultimate. 
His attack speed is already maximum. Or it's only 50 out, uh, away from max attack speed this early on, and he had like 250 damage with that alacrity on him. So that's going to be not only one, but probably two tier twos going the way of RIT here. Net worth jumps right back up into their favor, back to where it was before that last team fight loss at the Roche Pit. And it's just looking better and better for RIT here. At this rate, I'm saying there's going to be a game three. This is so scary to play against RIT right now it's with the Invoker. He pretty much can kill a hero by himself. He can kill um, all Shadow the heroes. Fiend. Shadow huge. Fiend doesn't have a BKB anytime soon, so they can't push at all uh, in terms of split push. Mm -hmm. And having to deal with the split push on the side of. RIT is just going to be difficult because Invoker has boots to travel for a while now. Yeah. And he's just going to push out lanes, and you're not going to feel comfortable trying to push it out alone. Just look at the net worth. This Invoker flying above the rest. He has a bots, he has his blink done, and he's sitting on 1500 gold even after all that. So he's going to have slot issues soon. And at 22 minutes, you don't really expect that from a from an Invoker. Maybe from an Alchemist, but. This is just a, a player playing the hero to the best of its ability. You can tell that this guy knows his invoker well. And he knows his strategy well. He has this alacrity, really high level. He's been using it at the really nice times for his teammates. And as long as RIT doesn't throw again with this next Roshan, if they get it at the right time, if they get this tier 2 and just systematically take away the map from Yukon, they could just uh, end up ending this game pretty quickly like I was hoping for at the start. Maybe a sub 30 minute game. Lags is up on the coddle now, mm -hmm. and they're looking to just uh, fight head on. Oh, Troll running straight into Ego. Right into a smoke tank. He doesn't have uh, any Aegis, and the back line there is not able to save him. So he will get blown up at the start. However, no, there doesn't look like there will be too good of a return. No, it right. will. The Omni Slash There's actually here. miss bounces. That's going to be a, most likely a death on the Ego here. The Winter's Curse will be on the back line, just stalling up the Invoker, but the wave will come out. They will get the Juggernaut, and uh, now the Duel will come out. is enough. It's taking out everyone so low. Legion will get the Duel Yeah, win. Legion got the Duel. And now it's Evaden versus everyone, and he definitely can fight everyone. <laughs> Evaden's killing everybody. If he goes for the Tornado here? No, he won't get it. He's just going to take the kill on the Village Fish and let the... Uh, He's so trying to sunstrike. He gets it. Sunstrike in the pool. He gets all of them. No way. Okay. What a player. <laughs> Map hack something. No, that guy just. He's level 21. <laughs> he's level 21. It's 24 minutes in. He has top net worth. He just salvaged that awful, awful fight. This guy. Okay. If RIT <laughs> wins. If RIT wins. Look at he the, is MVP. Look at the mini map, dude. Yeah, they just. Carl, you're so good. <laughs> Says this Carl player. Oh. Heck, if I was that Goddle too, after dying at the start of fight, like being, oh, that's all I could do, guys. I recalled you in, carry me, Evaden. Do everything <laughs> that you're supposed to do. They, ba they barely got the recall in as well. Yep. I'm, I'm impressed. That was fun. And now RIT is definitely looking even better than they were before. Yes, they lost some of their cores at the start of the fight, but net worth is over 10,000 in advantage. XP is almost 7,500. Roshan is available to take, and now they're knocking at that last tier 2's door. I'm and pumped. With daytime up on the Kado right now, they're looking very strong. They can get this next Roshan, and uh, this invoker is untouchable. He literally can 1v5 at this point, and they don't have the BKBs yet. I think one is flying out for the Shadow Fiend, but one is not enough because even the BKB is not going to be enough for Melody to survive as the right clicks from um, Evaden is pretty scary with yep. the Alacrity on himself. And the Roche coming down very quickly to uh, the troll Alacrity combo with the uh, invoker just prime some right clicks. A 25 minute secondary Aegis. All the tier 2s except the top one are dead, but that's going to be going down very quickly. Evaden can easily just push out one of the other lanes, bots in, and all of a sudden Yukon is defending their high ground against an Aegis push where they are down over 10k net worth and it's going to soon be 10k XP. It's a, it's a tough ask for them. 
Yeah, this caudal daytime is huge. Yep. There's constant illuminate blast coming in, healing in the creep wave as well as his uh, own heroes up. It's so hard to defend against that. Yep. And if we see, like we saw right there, with uh, Eradicate just sitting back using the purge and the heal on Troll Warlord, we see Illuminates coming out just to heal up this uh, troll. He could just sit in the front line and just slowly take away the base. They don't have any repositioning items for the side of Yukon, so if Troll just stands there, they don't have a way to force him deeper. Evaden looking for a solo for kill a bottom on kill the melody. I don't think he'll get it, will he? Nah, yeah, he realizes there's a BKB a shrine nearby and he just backs off. But almost a kill. Legion is coming down here. He might want to try to get a duel, but he won't find him. The uh, Shadow Fiend will pop his Shadow Blade and run around. You should but... see that the Shadow Fiend's here because the presence is on himself. Mm -hmm. You can see the debuff. Bellico or Eradicate blinking in a little bit aggressively and he will end up going down there. But now uh, Troll Warlord running in. Unable right. to get anything out of it, but with Invoker also coming in, the Sunstrikes on the mark, they will blow up Melody, they glit the Eradicate as well, the Aegis will be used, the Finger and Omni Slash used to get it, now they don't have anything in uh, Yukon to kind of get away here. Looks like the Blink from Lion will be enough to get him away. They do have the Keeper Vision though, so he's not getting away anytime soon, I was wrong. And now it's a 3 for 1, once again this Eradicate is dying, but his team is cleaning up these fights very nicely. And off of that, they don't have Aegis, but they might just push high ground here, force a buyback out of this SF if they can. They don't know that he doesn't have it, so they might just end up getting Rax here. Yeah, that was just spells used, and he's coming. Clean up. Easy peasy. And now Tier 3 is getting worked down. Level 23 Invoker. They do have a Blink Lion and a Blink Slardar, so we could see the defense uh, mounted before this Rax goes down. Right there we do see the Blink Hex from the Lion, but they don't really have any sort of uh, initiation follow-up. Alright, Legion's gonna be recalled now. Yeah, he can just go for a Blink Duel. Yep, they duel this uh, Juggernaut, but he just gets Cold Embrace. Oh, the Sunstrike though. It'll kill him, but they don't get the duel. They're still plenty fine with that. Juggernaut doesn't have buyback actually, so they don't have Fortify, they don't have a Juggernaut. And all of a sudden this hold became next to impossible. They are going to have to buy back on Wyvern. They did already lose melee Rax, and if uh, RIT manages to get away here without losing anybody, that is an incredibly big win. The fight recap. Like how the Keeper recalls the Legion out as if he's going to go in and die or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's had the tendency to do so in this game so far, so... And the graph just, it tells the story of this game. It's just going more and more and more in favor of RIT. Despite these fights, like, we don't even see the spots where these fights are going bad at the start. And it's just a steady slope upwards. 15k XP, 20k net worth. Where's where's the hope? Tell me, be don't be pessimistic like me. How does Yukon uh, salvage this? Is there a way, or is it just kind of... It's I mean, their late game isn't that bad, but I don't see how they can scale at this point. This invoker is literally unkillable. I don't know how he actually dies. Have, he would actually have to be alone, pretty much. Yep. He would and have to be... Against five. Lion and Slardar both would have to initiate on him, and then he would have to get Omni Slashed as well. <laughs> and then maybe he'll die. And with the Lincoln Spirit, that's a hard ask. And now, no, look at that. He's sitting on 6,000 gold. He just pumped up his health to 2,700 with a full Octarine out of nothing. He's at level 24, almost level 25. Uh, 30 minutes into this game, this guy's just a monster. Alright, Eradicate going in. Maybe gonna die again here. But he's just tanking the spells for Invoker. He knows that if the spells are used, Invoker is not gonna die. Nope. So he doesn't end up going down again. Troll Warlord running in, using his BKB, wants to 1v4, but he does not commit fully to this fight. Invoker See the does tornado, get Sunstrike. Alright, that's some miracle <laughs> plays right there. Is this guy Miracle on a Smurf? Is this guy playing from Jordan right now? He does get uh, another freak pick off. He is beyond godlike right now, and it does not look like they're going to have any interest in slowing this push down. They do manage to get the stun from the uh, thing onto Melody. I don't know if they see him there. The sentry will not come out. It's actually an observer ward, but they will oh, get a kill onto Ego. Jug. Evaden just doing what Evaden has to do. Tornado oh, will not connect, yes. unfortunately. But... The 18th second tornado cooldown. Once it's this stunned. top lane gets close enough for a uh, backdoor to be disabled. Actually, they're just going to take it through backdoor. They're, they're fully content with that. They're going to take the shrines now, maybe just wait for next Aegis to end the game. Or they could just systematically, you know, push in all the lanes, choke out the Yukon team, and then look for one more big pickoff before ending it. 
Oh this boy, is oh a boy. classic invoker game right now. This is this how isn't the classic. This is the game. perfect invoker game. This guy is living the dream. It's the invoker one v five classic. Yeah. Uh, his teammates are just baiting spells from the enemy team right now as he comes in and does everything. When you say classic, I tend to think of you know the pub invoker has no idea what they're doing rather than the you know miracle invoker who just wins the game by himself. But regardless, Evaden basically is Miracle right now. He's level 25. He's going to have a sheep and just a couple thousand gold. And at the rate this game is going, that won't take him long. It'll take him only a couple minutes. He's sitting at like 900 GPM, right? Oh. Uh, oh let's check it gold out. per minute? Yeah, 800. That's absurd. <laughs> I mean, UConn has to be feeling like they're playing against a Dark Moon boss right now. It's level 25 invoker this early with the tornado cooldown. They're literally like, they can't get hit by the tornado, otherwise they're dead immediately, I'm pretty yep. sure. The tornado not only does an insane amount of damage, but the cooldown is what, 8 seconds, 7 seconds because he has an yeah. Octarine? It looks like they might be trying to kill him here. Melody has gotten him out with uh, invis, but they will uh, not be able to kill him now. You kind of just gonna go for a desperate smoke and this game really came down to the slaughter blink being able to accomplish pretty much nothing because they had all their towers on the side of RIT and there was really nowhere to gank because all the tier ones were up pretty much the bottom tier one did eventually go down but because uh, invoker was just farming in this very steep pocket in the mid lane pretty much um, pushing the waves when it came into his tower there was really no gank to be had oh no ego the, oh, no, he the, got hit by the tornado. Recall. The cattle recall pulled the Vaden right away from a gank, right into the ego kill, and they do manage to get the sun strike on him when he's escaping. They get the kill. The uh, tornado will be a bit off the mark there, but they don't care. They have a creep wave pushing in. Juggernaut is dead. They could force the buyback or just go for more kills here. The tornado once again off the mark, unfortunately, but they're still content. They're okay, just pushing this high ground right now. It's daytime for another two and a half minutes, so they're in a good spot. And I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what UConn can do. They're fighting for their lives right now. If they win this game, they would go to Toronto for the top four. But with this, it'll be a one-to-one -one series if uh, RIT manages to cinch out the win. Uh, he's going to leave Troll to Yeah, they can't stop. It. They, have a, they have a Keeper with a heal, Illuminate, and they have a Troll War... Uh, oh, tornado onto Lion. Is he just dead? Looks like the duel will come out onto Slarder. This time he will get healed up, Gold Embraced again, and it doesn't look like he'll get the duel win, but that might not be enough. The Earth Spear going a little bit deep to get an ultimate on everybody. He will die for it. Eradicate also is going to use his BKB and die for that kill onto the Slardar, but Invoker is still here. He's not ready to leave quite yet. Or maybe they are. He's low He's on mana. mana. Troll Warlord is already in base. He could get recalled in, but I think that'll just be, uh, you know, a little bit of a stall in their plan. Alright, he's gonna get a Hex now. And yeah, Invoker's sitting up. on 8,000 gold. He just sold his Midas. Or 7,000. He just sold his Midas. He's gonna get a Hex. Roshan should be up in about a minute and, uh, and change. And you know, Invoker doesn't even need the Midas. He's just gonna oh. Hex him and just get a solo kill here onto the Shadow Fiend, most likely. He doesn't have any detection, unfortunately, so he does have to be a little careful. And with Lion showing up, he will just TP out. The blind sun strike, if he got that onto Melody, that would have been insane because that would have been like his seventh or eighth sun strike pickoff, but right now I think uh RIT would probably just get this Aegis, wait for the next daytime, and then push high ground at minute forty and just end this game. Unless, you know, something happens where Yukon just gets team wiped before that. There's a DD rune waiting for them as well. Yep. And we saw what happened top there. They're the only reason they died there is they kind of just went in and, all, and tried to go ham. But they just can't touch the troll when he's uh, alacritied and uh, pressed the attack. I actually really and like what RIT is doing, leaving this uh, rune here until 36. They're going to take it at the very last second, so they can hopefully just get Roche immediately oh, with it. And Ego might just get solo kill here in the bot lane. Oh, the blink is okay. there for Jug. Oh, but the tornado, tornado. just also off the mark. So Vaden just, you know, forcing these reactions, it's making uh, any of the cores scared from the side of uh, Yukon. They can't just go out and farm that because Vaden will be everywhere at all times. His bots are only 33 seconds cooldown and he has relocate just to get him anywhere. <laughs> Tried for the sun strike there, didn't, was not on the mark. 
and I was talking about this earlier, but this is definitely when the offlane slaughter doesn't work. And it's just in this type of scenario where you don't get a gank off immediately uh, once you get that blink and you can't really farm that fast. And there's a haste double damage roll warlord. He doesn't manage to find anybody, but he'll go right to Roshan. Both of the runes will expire, unfortunately, before it, but that doesn't really matter. Because Yukon can't contest this. And if they do end up contesting this and they run into the invoker first, they either kill invoker immediately or they all die. And it doesn't even look like they're going to try. They know yeah, it's too hitting risky. over a max attack speed right now with the buff from the Legion. Yeah, I think it tops out at 600, he's at 585, so it's basically perfect. There's no room, no room to improve on that. And that's without the Alacrity, right? That's just with the yeah. uh, Legion Commander. So, Age is going to be picked up by Legion, or by Troll Warlord. Cheese is going to be picked up by this uh, Eradicate uh, Legion Commander. I don't know why I mixed those two names up, Legion and Troll. They're not even, like, similar, but... And they don't have daytime with yeah, the they're, coddle bat. They're going to wait 2 minutes and 40 seconds, I imagine, get daytime, and then just uh, go push high ground. Because they'll still have around 2 minutes on Aegis with the next daytime popping. Uh, that tornado is so annoying. Because not only is it on such low cooldown, you spend so much long in the air with the maxed out um, quads. <laughs> 2.9 second lift on a 9 second cooldown. It's pretty much you're in the air for 33%. That's so silly. And it's just so spammable. It's not even that much mana. Considering he has a 3,000 mana pool, <laughs> holy moly. That's a, that's a dream game for Nyx Assassin or Pugna, I guess. A 3,000 mana pool invoker. There's so much int. 112 int on him. Plus 92. <laughs> Plus 92. This is his base. What an absurd game. And it's, it looks like they're just going to be pushing high ground now. It, daytime is at minute 40, but I don't think they really care. This Troll Warlord is pretty tanky with both a Sanjanyasha and a Scotty. He's sitting at 3,000 health or just below that. And he has a PKB to keep him alive if he dies that first life. The attempted initiation will be there from the Wyvern, but he will be silenced up and dueled immediately. He's going to go down. The Omni Slash doesn't even manage to kill Eradicate, and then he can just cheese right back up. Uh, Troll Warlord in the back line will be going for Melodies, but does not have detection, and there will be the Shrine available. The Juggernaut Healing Ward will go down. He's going to most likely die on this right side. The Finger will go out on the left to kill the Earth Spirit, but that is not enough for a defense from Yukon. They need a core and it does not look like they will get it. They're on the full retreat right now. Evaden is not letting them get away, and Bellicosa calls GG. They are, <laughs> they are well aware of how poorly this game is going for them. It is now going to be 1-1. to one. RIT making a very convincing reason why they were 12-1 and one for the regular season and why they are contenders for the top four. What Man, a game. I said it. They just needed to get a slightly better early game, and um, it happened here. I would not be surprised to see an Invoker first ban next game. This guy, without a doubt in my mind, MVP of the match. Evaden just doing what he had to do. And more. How did you deal with that? They tried to gank him too. And it wasn't like he had the best lane in the world against the Shadow Fiend. He was just behind in CS. And just that one Sunstrike kill led to an 8 minute Midas? What was it? Mm -hmm. 8 30 after or that, it's it's hard to contest on Roker farming because he's doing it in like deep parts of his jungle and like under his tower for the most part and uh, he gets to a point where he's a bit hard to dive so definitely gonna have to give him the MVP of the game for that one very impressive invoker performance yep all right well with that it is now one to one in this series the next game will determine who goes to the land playoffs for the finals in toronto and who just goes home with two thousand dollars in the eighth place position uh game three will be starting up shortly so before that happens we're going to get a quick plug uh, to our sponsor and see you guys soon only 14.99 Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.